Hey guys. All right. I gotta get this mask off. It's hard to breathe. And get rid of the keys. So, uh, if you haven't got the image already, we're working again with another angle on this lovely sculpture, Eve After the Fall. It's available on the Atelier Artista website. I am on day 10 of the master cleanse. That's when you uh, drink lemon, maple syrup and water and feeling great. A little bit scattered because uh, I've been running around the building looking for a lost swipe card. The swipe card allows you to make the elevator go up and down here at these days. Um, hopefully it just turns up. But for now, I'm kind of trapped until I leave or until tomorrow. So, uh, first things first is getting our image from our reference seen in our mind and kind of plotting it out on this paper. I am going to set the Pont de Moro timing here. Jeez, it's just been one of those days where I lose everything. 25 minutes. Reason being, it's the perfect amount of time studied by scientists for humans to keep their focus. I'm gonna talk uh, a little less about drawing and more about focus probably today because I am reading a book about it, about uh, meditation and enlightenment. I'm also gonna use my Pierre Noir today, some pencils, just an assortment of things. You can see my crazy tool area right here. So let's get going. Uh, I will start with a medium charcoal. I want it to be fairly soft. It's gonna be very gestural today. Let me just scooch this up, Whoop, scooch it back, and we'll go. There's a, so I'm thinking the longest lines, uh, and in this case, it's her head uh, going down to her hip. Her hip kind of comes out this way. So it's like cutting out the negative shapes. For those of you who don't need instruction, just put on your music. Uh, this pod, this uh, live stream is twofold. So I'm kind of uh, blocking in sort of my angles. And if you hear that outside, it's just, I got the windows open. It's hot in the studio. So that kind of gives me uh, the cutout structure. I'm going to uh, place uh, a center line as well. To me, when I'm looking at the model, uh, the center line touches the back of the calf. And if I'm just gonna take a quick measure top to bottom, halfway is about where the calf meets. Oh boy, let me just take a measure of that again. Halfway is where the calf meets. So I've gotta move this puppy up. Checking, getting my references before I really jump into this. I'm also going to take a measure of how um, tall to how wide because she is in about a, a two to one ratio, two tall to one wide. So I can use my pencil and say that's the uh, end distance, that's the end distance, and therefore this must be uh, double that, the height distance, right? One, two, one. Okay, I'm going to put her up a little bit higher. So this distance goes up to the shoulder, from the hip to the back of the leg, or from the back of the leg to the elbow. Those are equal distances. And that height so that same distance this way is around the shoulder level. So then I have a little bit more height here for the head. In fact, the back is turning there. So I've got, you know, my initial 
Uh, sketch is in the right place. The head has to move maybe a little bit to there. That places the feet. Oh, sorry if the head's in the way, guys. I will check the chat box every now and again. It's kind of like a mermaid shape. This almost looks like a tail, combining the feet together. The feet uh, line up to the high point in the hip at the asis. So just looking for the pieces of the puzzle that create uh, the relationships. If I take my pencil, as I'm looking at the uh, reference, from the back of the leg to the hip is a horizontal plane. So this lines up to here. So I'm just checking this relationship. It's about halfway from the crook up to the head. So I'm good there too. So just, ju I, I let my eye dart around. This is uh, kind of a way to triangulate where things are going. If I take this distance and break it into thirds, that gives me where the knee is. So um, from the crook of the back of the leg to the knee is a third. And this third equals where the uh, tree is. And then the last bit there, tree to the elbow. So we get something like that. That gives me the, so I've got outside shapes that I'm working, but also some inside shapes. We can see the scapula here. From the top height to here, halfway is the height of the hip. So I'll just take a measure off the reference again and just check that. So I've elongated quite a bit here. I want to uh, bring the body down a little bit. This is equal to the elbow as well, horizontally speaking. I want to bring this hip down. Things got a little long. So I got to remember that this point is my measuring point from here to here. That box is this, the overall piece is like this. I can also tilt my pencil when looking at the reference and just copy that line down. Because you're not turning your wrist, you can just bring these things back. I'm just gonna move up so you can see more of it here. Boop. All right. Shoulder above the knee.
this distance is equal to this distance, so I have to bring the head down a little bit. That's the arm that's covering her face, generally speaking. Where the knee is, straight up, and just a little step back is where there's a fold of the armpit, and here sits the breast. They curve this way. Every time you draw, it's a process of discovery, kind of figuring out your way around the space. And that's what makes it fun. It's a little bit more fun than fishing, although I love fishing. But that is a waiting game. Here, we're using our brain and interacting. taking a measurement this way to see how it compares to this leg and it actually needs to be a little bit wider comes down fairly flat to our kneecap the practice of drawing I feel or you know, art, it could be tennis for you. When you're getting in that zone where there's a stillness in your mind, it's a lot like meditating, you know? I'm not saying that we're going to get enlightenment here from drawing. I mean, there's a potential. There is a potential. But I have a meditation practice, and although sometimes I fall asleep during it, uh, it's not that different in the zone that I, that I get into when I'm drawing. While I'm talking, I'm having to use my brain in different ways, but while I'm drawing, I, it's not happening that way. I'm just act, you know, I'm just going forward. I'm just acting. I'm just reacting and, and allowing things to pass. And there's a real joy in that. There's no judgment I mean the judgments are like rules and that's an interesting thing to talk about because we want to learn rules in art we, we learn them to break them and we have rules in life things we won't do um, you know that has to do with our moral compass more so but I feel like it's a bit of a macrosm of the whole thing All right, so the upper body is happening for me. It's the lower body. I may need to step back for a minute and really have a look. Take a few more measures. We still got 12 minutes, so this, this block-in period, uh, I think I'll make her a little thinner as well. Let me just see that distance. One, two, one, two. Mm -hmm. We call this a, a practice, right? We're practicing our art. I think meditation practitioners, they say the same thing. I think. They're practice, right? They're 
practicing getting into the zone, essentially. So we're also practicing not just to get the skill every, every day we come and do this practice, but we're practicing getting in the zone so that when we need to, when we're in that creative zone that we can just make and do. We've rehearsed the lines. Whether you're drawing the same thing or not, it doesn't matter. I've drawn a line at this angle thousands of times before. I need it today, you know? You need to feel comfortable. You know, we get seated, we get cozy in our seat. We get ready to work. move this arm out a little bit. A little bit. I realize when drawing the tree, I have shrunk this in a little bit far. I felt that the arm was looking a little bit wide. So sometimes I gotta change its height, sometimes I gotta change its width. I guess in a way when we take our break too, that's getting out of the zone for a minute. It's getting out of the zone so we can be realistic in what we're seeing or, or judging rather than just going full head on into just the way we're, we're feeling about it. Yeah, I want this to be here. That's good there. Doesn't change much here, does it? So pick your a uh, very uh, malleable, erasable material at first. The reason I don't choose graphite on a drawing like this or on this paper is because if I decide later to do this in charcoal, uh, it won't stick. Graphite is incredibly slippery. So putting it down first is, although it's a great material to draw on, not always the best way to begin. I have my chamois, I might just slap this whole thing, who knows. Uh, there's no plan really, except that I'm drawing this particular reference. That's my only plan today. curious how many photos of this one sculpture I took. I must have just circled it. So this line comes down to about the center point of this breast, which honestly, gonna have to make bigger. it was the artist maybe it was the diet of the day maybe it's just my initial plan was small maybe that's that's just uh, how I want to draw them so if I uh, place the nipple let's just say it's there and then hold my pencil at the reference I should be able to find the other nipple they are usually parallel. Still feel like I got too much waste there. OK. 
Okay. So let's not get caught up here. Should look up at the screen, see how it sees for you looks for you guys. It kind of drives up to the face there, so I'm close. There we go. The second leg comes up, and you can see I already have a fairly good sketch of where that is, so I'll use it. The knee aligns to the ulna here, which is just beside the hair flap. <laughs> That's not a technical term. Those of you who joined me last time will notice that I'm not playing the royalty free music because it was terrible and I just don't want to risk it again. It's hot in here, the windows are open, so sometimes you'll hear cars and whatnot. I have also booked my first models, the of uh, the return to the studio here. Width of the head is equal to the length of that. Good. Let's put that a little bit longer. It almost points to the breast here. And then comes down at a slight angle. Where the trochanter is, where this knee actually goes. That distance is equal to this distance to the toes. The toe to the top of the foot is equal to the top of the foot to here. So you see I'm just making a, a little check, being a little bit analytical still, feeling a little out of sorts while I'm drawing right now, but I will get into that zone soon enough. That's the, I have faith in that. Practice does that. A little rough around the edges in the first go. I've been teaching animation in the daytimes, so my head is living in the digital realm right now. All right. It's the last week of my teen animation camp. I've got all girls, 
So this is the way of animation these days, it seems. That uh, the girls are the one really expressing themselves artistically in that field. And they're film, I'm just so proud of them. We're, we're doing it through Zoom, which is definitely a new teaching situation for me. I tried it with the painting classes. It didn't really work. Uh, it's difficult to see color properly. The students would have to tilt their work. So uh, it didn't really work. But uh, digital things, I can say, okay, share your screen and I can teach technology through the screen. So it's working out really well for an animation course. I suppose we could probably maybe do drawing like that if everyone had the setup that I have in my studio. But that's the other thing is the home user doesn't necessarily have the technology. A lot of my students are using, uh, hmm, just uh, where the feet meet is where the body meets. Okay, so I'll step back, have a look, uh, analyze what I'm doing. I suggest you also get a fresh look at what you're doing. We'll take a little five minute break. What, come on. Clear. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. And you'll hear the beeping when you want to come back. Let's just tilt this up a little bit. Oh. Very precarious camera setup today. I hope it doesn't fall on my head. All right, five, three minutes. That's over. That's a little more centered for you.
Oh, 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 already. Okay. Let's get back to it. All right. Mask off. Maybe I'll stretch it up between here. All right, 25 more minutes. So I analyzed uh, what I was doing, and uh, I mean I'm a little. I've made smaller up here. There's this uh, visage going this way. The leg seems big. I'm gonna just bring the hip in a little bit and uh, shoot the foot out to here. There's kind of a diagonal that I see. Uh, I could also just hold my pencil up and uh, check it on the screen. So that's what I'm gonna do, just trim it in a little bit. It feels so big, but this leg is massive when I measure it and look at uh, the fact that it's very, very close to me. So what I might do uh, on this drawing occasion is uh, shadow map right away, uh, which is a little bit di different way of working for me, but Hey, we can change, we can be spontaneous whenever we want to be. In fact, being an artist, we probably, that's the way to be. So the heel comes down like this. The thing people avoid, the feet. Let's have some fun with them. And they're huge. If you measure them, they're huge. If I measure them, they're almost two head lengths. They're close to us, we're lower down, we're looking up. So there is some perspective at work here. So it might be, feel weird to draw on that big at first, but sometimes we gotta tell our brain to shut the F up. Hey, that's the zone again, right? Rather than drawing what we know, draw what we actually see. Carve that in. That was pretty good there. There's a lot of lost edges uh, from this angle. It was very softly lit at the Musée d'Orsay. In fact, it's not lit. It's That's the skylight coming in. You can see the banding in the reference photo. Uh, it used to be a train station. It's just all natural light there. This foot actually uh, reminds me a lot of Michelangelo's David. Okay, and that curves up a little bit. So we got this big monster box. Oh, sorry. My bad. Hey Keith, you're here, hooray. Not painting yet. Um, we just got a, I don't know, a couple more weeks of this. Then we got, uh, I've had some new models approach me who I have met. Some of them worked in Montreal and, uh, I've got the bookings started. So models, if you're out there too, there it's coming. Uh, I've measured up the space and figured out how I can keep all the drawing horses and donkeys socially distanced. The issue is I will be running everything at a loss probably. Um, it's not much room to uh, make money to pay the rent here. But it's more important that we get back together and do our work, I think. And when things even out in the future, well, I don't know. I hope prices don't have to go up. I'm not adding any COVID pricing. The real struggle for me is we have our figure drawn here is drop in. So I'm going to have to figure out how to make a sign up sheet. Um, and if someone like Keith is going to be here every week, you'll just be automatically signed up because I only will have so many spaces uh, in order to keep that social distancing parameters fulfilled. 
So that should be interesting. Hopefully everyone shows up to their time slot and nothing is wasted. But also, sometimes you don't know if you're going to come or not. So uh, we'll still be using the multipass. It's just that you'll have to go online and say what session you'll be there for. And it will be first come, first serve. I'll be here, luckily. Um, although I work usually... Tuesday nights and I haven't confirmed with Luke yet if he's gonna host the short pose uh, we've briefly talked but I don't have a full confirmation yet so I've only been booking the Wednesdays we have Miss Marla Singer coming in right away very exciting I, you know, I am really enjoying drawing from these photo references I took years ago. It might be something that I keep up, just not on a Wednesday for you guys, because uh, I will be taking on Keith's painting challenge. And man, am I ever nervous about that. Nervous about that. That's not a lot of time to paint the figure. Oh, oh, another development that's so exciting. I have been uh, following my dreams, you know, keeping track of them, writing in my journal, uh, you know, what I want out of life because it's Virgo season right now. My birthday's coming up and, uh, you know, it gives you a time to self-reflect and analyze. And I have always wanted, always wanted to go to Iceland. That's my, t number one was Japan, but I've done that. I spent a month there. Uh, number two is Iceland. And the other day I go on Instagram and it's after like reading a chapter of Tony Robbins. And so I'm feeling all inspired. And uh, Casey Ba, if you don't follow him, he posts this post that says, hey, two spots left, come paint with me in Iceland. And I decide, like a jackass, hell yeah, I'll do it. But, uh, not one, not, you know, caring about the price. It's shocking how expensive it's gonna be. But um, jumped in and now I don't know, like I got many a reason to live until that point. I am really looking forward to that. I'm gonna stay uh, an extra four days and discover some of Iceland on my own after one day before and three days after. Guys, if you got the cojones to uh, buy a plane ticket right now, oh my God. I think it was like $700 return flight to Iceland. Uh, now's the time because nobody's there plane industry is hurting so they want to sell tickets pretty bad um you know that's it's in a year even so i'm i've thought way beforehand just uh i'm so super excited about going to iceland and it's going to be a figurative course so uh you know, some of the really expensive tuition is going to go towards models, presumably, uh, and maybe bus rides. Uh, honestly, there wasn't a lot of information. It could have just been a money grab, but it's going to be next July, which is normally when I'm abroad uh, studying. Anyhow. All right. I'm spending a little more time on this rock than I should. Uh, might spend a lot of time on this rock. It's got, th this is the nicest angle of this rock compared to the last three drawings. Uh, across from where the toes are and below where the armpit is, right? So that little triangulation is the fruit that gave us all free will. The rock is a lot closer uh, 
out to where this knee is. If, if that's where I'm keeping the knee, I'm still not fully convinced. I've distorted a little bit. I'm drawing at an angle so things are getting further away. And the reason I draw at an angle is that so you can see it more straight on. Otherwise, you'd be seeing something like that. And my head would be in the way. So it's a little bit of an awkward position for these videos. And I constantly have to check the screen to make sure I'm not covering it with my head. Thanks for popping in there, Greg. I hope your delicious potatoes and bacon are going good tonight. Really, the arm would be down here. Really, the arm would be down here. That comment there is from my uh, neighbor, G Money. It's nice of him to Come check it out. It's cooking dinner, I'm sure, right now. He just harvested his potatoes. And I'm on a cleanse, so he offered me lots of potatoes. Unfortunately, I have to keep my integrity uh, in the goals that I'm trying to achieve. And those right now are health. And let me tell you, I feel great. I've been doing... 140 push-ups a day, three sets. I got a little alarm on my phone. I wish in March when I was feeling uh, a little sad about the way things were going that I had started this practice. A little late to the rodeo, I'm afraid. But better late than never, as they say. I really miss doing martial arts. I'd done them since I was 12 or 14. And a lot of the gyms closed. As you know, this is old news, guys. I don't know why I'm re relating it. Because I gotta talk on this. A lot of people like to talk. I'm just waiting for me to say the wrong thing and it be recorded for all of time. Because in the past, I was a lippy little bastard. Little punk ass. Fortunately, I've matured with age. Like a fine wine, I'm just getting better and better. Also, as you see, the hairline recedes with wisdom. And I'm okay with that. I'd rather be wise at this age know what I love, know what I'm doing, then be good looking and going to the bar every night. To me, not the thing. Okay, that's the shadow pattern there. I'm gonna move it slightly over again. I feel like I'm blocked in enough. Uh oh, you know what? I don't know if you can hear that. That's my reminder to meditate and do my exercises. So I gotta turn that off. If you just set up this phone, I'm using Headspace for my daily meditation practice. So I'm meditating and exercising around the same time, right when I wake up, halfway through the day and after dinner, which would be now, but since, uh, Today's schedule is a little different. I picked up extra stuff to do at work. So I was racing around. That's why I was a little frazzled when I came in. Should have meditated. And it kind of goes back to what I was talking about, this zone, this focus. That might be too why I find it very difficult to uh, talk while I'm painting. It's just so many more things to consider and... All right. Looking pretty good there. In my humble opinion. 
I was thinking, those of you guys who are out there listening right now, I was thinking it might be nice to uh, do a book club. Art books, obviously. Not art picture books. But books that we could read and meet and talk about. You know, like Leonardo's notebooks or... Um, you know, just talk about our uh, shared experience and opinions. So if a lot of things are going to be done remotely, we can still read and talk. I've become like a Zoom master now. Uh, I, you know, who knows what's going to happen, so I don't mind using that platform. And then you kind of got that accountability. One of my favorite art books, and it was a surprise to me, I'm, I consider myself a very spiritual person, and my art is spiritual there's there's a reason behind it you know um alex grace the spirit of art where he discusses us the motive of a certain type of art you know but it it can be abstract too it's not representational art what he's talking about actually but but why we make it uh i think that might be a good candidate it's thin we would feel achievement pretty quick we could do it in a month and then meet up and talk about it when I read I actually I take notes on every chapter this is I'm reading uh, Tony Robbins right now awaken the giant within and with every chapter I'm not done this chapter yet but uh, I make notes and the reason is, is because um, the way to learn I find is the next day when you go to read the first chapter you review the last chapter uh, I learned that a long time ago but also reminded it uh, with the Jim quick book limitless ever since I was young I was always into like diet and self-help stuff so that's what my mom had in the bookshelf so that's what I became accustomed to okay this might be a little more s straight go it's very tough to see this arc in the reference maybe I've smoothed it out a little bit much so I, I think I have enough structure built uh, I am going to move this up too Yeah, that's in a good spot. I'm going to uh, squint my eyes down and build these shadow shapes in the next seven minutes. Squint, 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 squint. Um, I have two level of shadow shapes, two values, I think, like a very, very dark, goes across the top of the brow, down the glabella, and across the nose. This I'll, area I'll treat as my black. And there'll be another dark, slightly lighter. But we'll go so dark with that. Another place where that black exists is uh, under the arm, down the top of the breast, and then across the branch, which it looks like I'm going to have to move over, actually. I don't know what I did there. I think I just made things a little longer and skinnier on the top, just because it's tilted away from me. Because these do have an alignment. There's another dark attaching to this dark. It's like a triangle pattern. So I'm thinking abstractly here. And that creates this shape. So I'm just gonna bring this out again. Need to be wider. The width to height uh, is quite a bit off on my drawing on this tree branch. So now's the time. The shadow shapes are allowing me to see these issues and repair them. There's a light just creeping in right there too. It's very thin though. Oh, it comes down. Then it goes in.
In terms of accuracy, this drawing is a lot less accurate than my past ones. Jumped in, a little rough. And I'm committed to it. Some of those first marks, you know, you gotta get right. Sit, look, think, don't be frazzled. And down the side, uh, the body here, there's another darkest dark. I would say it goes all the way to here. That has elongated the breast slightly. So we'll increase this as well. God, I the way I'm increasing breast size today, I should, uh, Get Alberta healthcare here. Holy smokes. This is not an episode of Botched. Or maybe it is. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Darkest Darks. Uh, also beside the face. Which drives this arm down. A little bit more. And when I think abstractly, I don't worry that this is an arm and I have drawn an arm before. But if I can remove that thought, I can draw what I see and not what I know. So from the brow, the bottom of the palm, it just goes towards here. That's my other darkest dark. So as in painting, we go dark to light. There's even one under the finger up here. So if I shoot a line up from the head, somewhere like that, puts my finger right there. The hair comes out here. Okay. Just squint down. You know, you'll be able to see it, but you're intensifying it. Because really, I would only do this triangle here as my darkest dark, like that. Underneath the buttock here, turning. It's a little tilted down. So I just held my pencil in front of my eyes horizontally to see what the tilt is. We misjudge these angles all the time. I just say, oh, it's straight. But don't. Be a little more uh, accurate with these things. It'll make your life a little bit easier later on. Okay, so behind here, it's like straight. When we do the bar drawings, very angular approach. So this incorporates both underneath the butt and the cast shadow that's happening on the rock. I thought I was going to go on a rant today, but it's really just, it is still technical talk here. So there's a lost edge in between there. One of my favorite things, those lost edges. This as well, because it's long pose, it's more technical, it's less expressive. I definitely would not work this way for a short pose drawing. We know how much time we have. And if you don't know how much time you have on a drawing, then play it different. Don't worry about measuring. Go for the gesture. Go for the uh, Riley rhythms. Get the feeling of it rather than the facts of it. Not so I don't think for a long pose. You can chip away at it with long pose. This uh, bottom of the rock is in alignment with the turning of the toes. So right about here, right? I'm like going here. Where does it line up here? Where does it line up here? I see it lining up with this brow. 
and with that toe, although these toes might come up a little bit, the line's sticking out a little bit far, but right behind it and up is that devious little bugger of a snake. We just see his head poking out. And it's a dark on this side. I might enhance that. Uh, it's lower, there's the fall of light, and it's storytelling. Bring his nose out too. Okay, whoa! I hope this is good for you guys right now. We are gonna take a five minute break. Boy, time, that's the zone, man. Time flies when you're having fun, they say, but also when you're focused and relaxed and just working away. I said something to that degree to my mom because my birthday's coming up and I'm an old man now. And you know, this summer just seemed to fly by. And she says, as you get older, it goes even faster. I mentioned this to someone else and there's actually scientific proof that because you have more memories and more experiences that your perception of time actually does make time speed up. So by meditating and whatnot, I'm hoping to slow time down and to learn to focus more. See, drawing is a very enjoyable thing and you start to focus and learn to see the details. And I truly believe that then out in the real world, you see the world with more focus and more acuity and more facts. And therefore, rather than getting more time out of your life, because time is finite, the finite, the quality of life that you're getting is more. Although sometimes it turns into daydreaming and you look off into space. For hours at end. I'm gonna take a little, uh, see a little man about a horse, drinking all that lemon water. Still makes me have to go pee a lot. And believe it or not, no solid food, going to the washroom twice a day. It's amazing what your body is capable of doing. Like no solid food for 10 days, and I feel great. And I can keep doing it if I want. Three minutes.
to ghost in the studio. Okay. Let's see now. Hello, we're back to drawing for 25 minutes. Man, that time just passed. Like, after the next session, we're already halfway. Jeez Louise. I've got a fog all of sea space as well after this. Saving it to later because there's lots of people in the building. Normally, I do it between 5 and 6. So, in terms of the ghost, ooh, uh, I, sp I spray and I fog like a ghostbuster to kill those bad boys. Okay, I'm moving slow today again. I feel very good about that. Very, very calm, collected. So for the most part, those are the darkest darks. Maybe this foot's getting a little big actually. Man, we'll leave it. We'll see how it looks in the end. Sometimes that gives you uh, perspective. Sometimes too, when you go, man, you get a really good lesson out of it. Let's hope it's a good lesson. You know, there is a little dark right there. There's a cat, oh, my head's in the way, sorry guys. There's a cast shadow under the fruit of knowledge. I'm gonna uh, make it a little bit bigger than I see it in the reference and give it a little bit more prominence in terms of the drawing, just a little bit. Say maybe 10% bigger, 15% bigger. Okay. Uh, often at this point, I would do my rollover with the kneadable eraser to clean stuff up, but I don't think it's necessary. We're gonna just keep rolling forward. So I'm gonna squint again. I'm gonna squint. Uh, so instead of finding my darks in this drawing, I'm gonna squint and outline my lights, uh, because it's very difficult to see what's light and dark here. I'm going to outline my lights, and those will be the areas that I'm going to leave of any marks. I'll, I'll just leave the paper, and eventually I'll even put a little white on. So sometimes I squeeze down to see the darks, Let, and honestly, there's not a huge difference. It's just what I'm focusing on as, do I see this edge or do I see this edge? as kind of what I'm uh, going after here. Often I squint down to see the darks, but they are a little washed out, so uh, there's lots of darks in this. Very few lights. There's even uh, some darker darks here. So what am I using? 4B soft charcoal. I might even keep this drawing a little bit more angular um, than the last ones. It's all just a process of discovery. What does it mean? What does it mean? Why am I doing this? Other than the practice. I hope you guys who are coming back to school here are practicing. It kind of drops off in the summer. In fact, I'm willing to bet the people who are watching this right now, like you, Keith, we're the ones who keep it up. I'm actually surprised I don't see Jeff on this chat. Okay, there we go. So just mapping it out now. I get more playbacks after on these videos than live. Right now, I'm talking live, but the watcher of this video could be after the fact. line over a little bit. It's 
This is starting to look boobish. It's all dark. Darker. Maybe even not that dark. This is all that dark. Oh yeah, now it's happening where you start to get these lost edges. Oh, sweet spots. And then this is a dark. There's actually a cast shadow traveling this way. Huh. This is all the dark. When I first uh, started drawing, I really loved being on the dark side. So sitting um, almost directly, like three quarter across from the light, happens to be one of my favorite places to draw from. Oh, there we go. Now it's notifying me, okay. The dark side. Although, in terms of Star Wars, I'm on Luke's side. I'm with the Jedi team. The Sith and Satan might seem cool, and I like rock music, but nope. Oh, I read this quote today that I, that uh, to see this one is good. Oh, it doesn't take very much light to wipe out darkness. I like that. You know, like if there's a solar eclipse or an, even when there's uh, the new moon, right? Like it's the darkest it will be. But even with an eclipse, like just as soon as the sun just like peeks over the side, bye-bye. Yeah, right? You can see everything again. I don't know how I worked that into a metaphor of art here, but in terms of life and goodness, being kind to others, it does have some value. All this is dark too. So I'm gonna use my chamois to uh, soften all of this. I do, I, oh, I found one more dark here actually. I do like um, the texture when rubbing over top. Like I like that graininess. Its purpose is uh, not useful here at the moment for what I'm doing. I want for the rocks it'll be very good because they're gritty looking. But for the flesh in this case, uh, I want to soften it up. Now when I squint again, eh. No, I'll add more material. This is all in the dark, the fall of light. There are lighter darks, of course, but we I just wanna get the material on here now. This is a half tone up here. So be careful you're not uh, mixing up what's a half tone or what is reflected light as well, because reflected light is inherently dark. It just looks light because it's beside something darker than itself, right? There's that relationship. Man, talking all this stuff, I should teach. Career option. Uh, the Monday morning is almost sold out. Because I can't do drop-in, here's a tangent. I get so lost. Um, because the Monday, uh, we have to have social distancing, it can't be drop-in anymore, so I'm only selling those as the full season. Also the full season because uh, it helps pay for the model, but also, uh, there, you know, some days I lose money, some days I, more people come and, and I can't fit um, too many people in here and I don't want to run into the problem where I'm sending people away because, you know, Monday morning waking up at 
eight or whatever to come down here to draw, that would be a really crummy feeling. Um, so I'm just trying to protect against that happening by making it a season's pass. I mean, you're welcome to share the season's pass with someone, but one pass is one ass. One pass, one ass, and one seat. So I think there's only two more left. I'll have to check with that because the numbers are like lim very, very limited in here, man. It's a big enough space, but I don't want to add to the problem. I'm not getting any of this social financing or whatever that people are CERB or whatever they're getting uh, and I still got to pay the Marta Loop rent they did give me uh, rent assistance this summer when no one was here but that that's that was only for three months and it was only a small portion so I am responsible for paying the bills here and I want to be sure we don't lose the studio fortunately I'm a good saver and I've been able to uh, deal with this. Hopefully everyone out there is experiencing the same thing. It's tough for artists, man. We never know when our next paycheck is going to come. So right now I'm taking on tons of jobs. Anyone that says, hey, I got a job for you, I'm like, yep, uh-huh. No problem. I'll take it. You know, there's a, something like 18% of Canadians are out of work right now. Man, it could be higher. I, I'm staying away from the news these days. It's a brutal, brutal thing. Same as social media. Like, what is... Let's be together. Let's show some peace, man. Show what you're doing, not complaining about what other people are, are not doing, you know? People get to live by their own rules, even if some of those rules are really stupid. All right, there's my fruit. Let's take the little sham and go from the dark to the light. We're gonna get a little bit of a Henry Yan thing going on here today. So following the form, if you need to curl it or turn it, gotta erase that one out. Getting some lines I don't want. Although they could become part of it, I don't know. So I sell the chamois at the studio. They're this big. It's a soft uh, deer skin. And I thought, you know, growing up with my dad, I used to go to Canadian Tire. I love Canadian Tire still to this day. And I swear, oh, yeah, that's all dark too, that, um, I'm gonna switch over to Conte actually. Sorry, back to the thought that I'm just trailing off here. I thought that the same thing that we buffed the car down uh, would also work. I believe that's also deer skin. I think they call that a chamois actually. So you can save a lot of money and get something the size of this paper for $14 and get this many, you know? There's a clean one, unused one, and there's the one I've been using for years. So I think what I might do is a kind of a hard outline and I'll, I'll get back to uh, the darks again, but a little bit more refined. So I've gone over to my uh, Conte now. Much more black. Who knows how much detail I'll get in this thing. I'm going to drop the glabella a little more to the right. And there is a slight line on the other side that helps uh, show the eye line. I mean, it's in the dark here, but let's still show it, you know? There's the eye. I think she must have her eye closed there. The head is really dark in this angle. 
What I like about this sculpture too is it's not uh, white, white, white marble. Maybe it could even just be I warmed it up a little bit in the settings. I also increased the contrast before uh, putting it on the website so that it would be easier uh, for you guys to draw. Sorry if it's cheating a little bit. It was just such soft light. I didn't want people to not be able to see what's light and dark if they're following along. So we'll go back in. Because this is my darkest dark, I'm pressing a little bit harder and I am drawing with the tip, uh, but I am turning it. So I'm sharpening it all the while. In case I rub on this again, this is the, I don't want this to move. This is kind of my lock in position here. This is that I'm committing at that point. We'll commit there too. Thin out the nose a little bit. So the bottom of the palm arcs up to the ulna, and then we have a kind of a drop down again. So before I drew quite a straight line, uh, now I'm refining it and breaking the lines up into one or two or just a few more moves. So this arm keeps going, then it goes up. And that shadow shape follows it. Kind of move this line up slightly, just ever so slightly. It could be where I went wrong, one of the many places. <laughs> but I needed some more meat coming down to this elbow. Now that's a lost edge there uh, between the two, so I don't want to uh, describe that too much. I want it to get lost. Uh, there's a half tone here though, which uh, helps that mound look round. So the half tone here is a little bit darker than the paper. The paper is our light-ish, and then the white that we'll use is the brightest light on the drawing. If we get to it, like I said, moving slow today. It feels good. Slow and steady, man. Wins the race. I gotta move up. It's like this little dark circle where the hair folds here. Like this hair is, is complex. It's dark and then you've got all these lights, which I could draw with an eraser if I wanted to get this much detail in. Draw some of the core shadows on it. I feel like the pace and the way that I'm working is more than the time allotted for this type of drawing. The bark drawings give you this kind of feeling as well. Are they worth the effort? Uh, hmm. To learn? Maybe to sell your work? People really seem to like them. But not everything needs to be rendered out like that. It can really kill the feeling in something too. But these French academics, of which we're copying, De La Planche uh, was the sculptor of this piece. I can't remember, it was like 1815 or something. 
You know, they went to Ecole de Beaux Arts and they learned the academic method, which is where the Barg stems from. You know, they had conventions, which a lot would argue suck. I remember, I liked Dali. Now I'm not such a fan. He was a crazy man. When I was 16, that was kind of, you know, be the craziest guy, whatever. Um, and he wasn't accepted. And so, in a Hitleristic way, that's not really a word, but, um, you know, he went against it. But, I mean, from what I've read, he's thrown a kid off a bridge. There's a really good chance he raped somebody. A model and I guess he he was a dirty old man he definitely had a fascination with poop um, you know in the same way that Picasso was a womanizer I'm not saying it was the time and that's okay but I definitely lost my love for him in the way that I see things today but he wasn't accepted uh, for a long time in the into the Academy so, and I mean, his work is fairly classical. You know, he could represent quite well. I guess that always upset him that he wasn't accepted. But these guys, you know, they had to do things a certain way. And it's not the easy way. We live in a society where the easy way is seems to be the way which is why slowing down and practicing and, and giving yourself that time is a real luxury and I do not mean to rhyme but I do it's just like the dad jokes in my classes they just come out that way all right so there's a little bit of hair I guess I kind of leave it at that there's that dark shape um, underneath the finger and another one for the hair here but I think that's for the time we have enough for now first pass I'm just going down window shading this bugger maybe as we go we'll get more expressive I don't know I'm gonna do a hard thick outline today so a little bit more graphical I think and then maybe not color in background at all use that to uh, kind of assume a background like that's their force back to the spiritual stuff like maybe this thick outline is like an aura encapsulating the body it's what I often say about contour drawings. You know, don't do them. Because <laughs> people draw the contours all wrong at first. You know, you gotta build the structure a variety of ways. All right. This is reading as, this reflected light is a little bit lighter. I'll, I'll pump it up a little bit. If you squint your eyes, you'll see what I mean. So I'm drawing up and toward the contour here. This is my core. It's a little bit lighter below. Graphical. Oh, here we go. Let's just soften it a little bit use the uh, stump today and I'm softening and pulling it towards the light from the dark into the light and where I need to enhance the light again just erase it there's a chance I'll have time for white I don't know I got another minute left here uh, let me just zoom in on what I've done 
Zoom in on what I've done. There we go. Give you kind of a little bit better idea. 46 seconds left. I'm going to just stop. Uh, my back is a little bit sore right now from hunching over so that the camera doesn't hit me in the head. I should almost just like mount a camera to my head so you'll see everywhere that I'm looking. I don't know. Seems too involved. I'm not going to uh, have to worry about that once Wednesday night starts up again, right? I mean, there's a chance I guess I could broadcast, but I wouldn't talk. I have to think about that one. Because it's kind of nice. I could leave a camera set. There's plenty of room, but I'll be painting as well. Hey, Jeff, you're here. Break. I was just talking about you. Um, let's take five. I'm going to put something in the chat. Yep. Keith, you're right about the time saver. You are right about the time saver. Uh. You're right about the time saver, and believe it or not, maybe I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm, I'm openly admitting that. Yes, I have a school and an atelier, but I am still learning. Learning a lot, too. There's lots to learn in art. This is a lifetime. So, uh, let me just put it in here. There, guys. What? Okay, sorry. Zoom out, dummy. Uh, five minutes. I'm drinking so much of this masker cleanse that I gotta pee every break I get. Which means mask up to go in the hallway. You know, all that jazz. So I haven't been spending much time looking at it, but. We're doing it. Oh yeah, take a picture of the thing. Actually, I don't think I need to pee this break. Take a picture for the social media. Taking a picture for the social media. For those who can't join us. For my song. Yeah, I made the torso too long. Damn it! Well, we'll see that later on.
just gotta pause for a sec. I just thought of something. I lost the key, so I think I know where it is. Nope. All right. Let's clear that. 25 more minutes, so we're halfway. I don't feel like this drawing is halfway done. So it might be time that Bunny lights a little fire under his bum. Damn it, I ran again. You know, I write a diary every day, and it's always like rhyming or iambic pentameter, which must just speak to how my brain works. It's actually annoying because instead of using the word I want, I have to find uh, a word that rhymes that best describes what I'm trying to say. So Jeff, what? Oh yeah, Jeff, there's, I'm telling you, man, we're not doing the, the free music. It's just too terrible. You were right. Um, I just sing in my head. I'm super addicted to Audible books. Keith, you, I think you shared with me a bunch of Audible books at one time. Or, or try to, but you can't share other people's Audibles or some crap. Uh, I would love to be listening to that right now. I think uh, when we get back to drawing, my, my, the problem is, is my phone sucks. It's, it has like 10 minutes of power. And then I have to be tethered in it, plug it in. It dies on phone calls constantly. And I'm too cheap to go buy a new phone because this one still takes pictures and works for me. It's just very annoying. And, uh, but I would just listen to Audible, I think, the whole time. Have someone read me my books. But this book club thing I'm thinking about, no one's going to, we got to read it. Maybe even take notes. All right, moving down. I got to get this much done in this session. If I'm going to make this the next session and then have finishing at the end. There's some Virgo time management for you right there. Um, so a little bit of crap here. I think this is going to look more like a sketchbook drawing by the end. I don't think this is going to look like a rendered long pose at all tonight. Just uh, going to lighten up a little bit here just to help me find my way around this breast and you know, I don't say that lightly. Hey, also, Jeff, congratulations on your, well, you showed your wedding pictures on Facebook. What a handsome couple. Oh yeah, dead air. Okay. Somebody shared some of my work on their, like, I don't know, they're probably trying to make money on Instagram. You know how all these people, like, they just get followers and they only post stuff by other people? But I ended up getting, like, 10 followers out of it today. Like, lot, like they just basically went through all my uh, photos. And they shared stuff that sucks. That's the other thing. I'm like, I don't know if they really know figurative art. <laughs> but, uh... They did share it and then you know that now I have people from India following me artists from uh, Iran so that's pretty cool I haven't really tried or pushed this influencer thing I don't think I really care to someone else could do it for me if they want I already spend way too much time booming out on YouTube I'm pretty good at posting stuff, but I do it kind of like a job. Like I'm like, okay, gotta post something. All right, here we go. 
five things. Okay, now get back to life. I mean, it's like slice of life. You guys have seen my Instagram. This is what I'm doing today. I don't know. It's kind of nice, I guess. I, honestly, I think most of the time I'm just doing stuff for my mom. <laughs> she likes to know what's going on. It's too bad she doesn't want to watch these. She could hear the, the conversation. Maybe I should buy a second computer and like half, half zoom this thing so there could be a, a live voiced conversation to each other. But don't worry, it's not gonna be for much longer. Unless the worst happens, of course. Who knows? <sighs> All right, getting a little bit more aggressive here. So I'm really scratching away. I'm turning the tip of the pencil the whole time though because I like to keep it sharp, right? So I'm turning when I'm doing this. If you're a newbie out there, I feel like just, uh, I feel like just my friends are watching today. People are off doing their summer thing. I'll show the roundness of this breast here. So I, I lightened up and then I'm going to darken this down. I'm losing the, some of the forms here, getting a little flat, which is also one of the problems with the classical method. If you don't have enough time to develop uh, the roundness of form, because you flatten, you really do flatten all of your uh, darks at first. And then you, so you're working darks for a long time and then you start to uh, go into your form. <clears throat> that looks good there. This questionable, these little finger love here. <laughs> oh my God, what the hell, bunny. I'm going to move the mic a little closer. I hope you guys can hear this scratching sound. It's so lovely. So this blurry um, rubbed in value is my reflected light. It will also be a little bit blurry as I come out of my half tone. It's actually a little bit darker up here. So just keep rubbing that dirty finger. And then I'll just lighten a little bit out of it, but not, and then rub on top of it again. Not too light. Light is catching the, the shoulder here a little bit. Light is not this bright here on the breast. Um, however, in order to show more roundness of form, I'm going to leave it for now. This is a more illustrative approach I'm doing today. So there's cross hatch lines coming out. It's all good. I don't know if this mic can pick it up because there's a lot of air filter sound in this room right now. Oh my 
god. I did not hit the timer. Uh, I believe it's about 12 more minutes. Just looking at the time of, of night. I'm, I'm willing to bet that's right. It's okay, we can cheat. There's not really anyone checking over us here. Last week I was spent though, um, by the end. Probably because I had just gotten on the cleanse. I'm like running upstairs right now, like a madman. I saw my nephew the other day, and I don't know, I, I ran like a little kid. He kind of gave me a dirty look actually. I guess seeing an adult bound that excitedly towards him uh, is not a normal behavior. <laughs> I think he'd be used to that by now. Kids get me excited. They're, they're, you know, my students, my seniors are like little kids a little bit. Um, they have little tantrums and stuff and, you know, they have uh, interesting ways. Not all of them, of course. And if you're one of them listening right now, like that's not uh, putting you down at all. There's a, an honest pureness to it that's beautiful. And uh, I quite enjoy it. In fact, they're my favorite demographic to work with because they have great stories and life experiences. So they bring a lot of, let's say, color to the classroom. And they're not afraid. You know, it's like, whatever. Spent a, I spent a lifetime already living. Now they are doing what they love. Sure, it might be a little bit late in the game, they think. That's the hardest thing to get over, I think, is, you know, why did I make these choices in life earlier on? So those of you who are drawing right now, believe me, in my lifetime of teaching, I have only heard more regret stories of not doing it than doing it. I've never heard anyone say, oh, I wasted my life making art. Never heard that. Never heard that. That's odd. Maybe it's just the circles I run in. But I have heard billions of times, oh, I wish I had done this my whole life. I really missed out. This is what I really wanted to do. Guess what, guys? We're doing it. We're living the dream right now. I thought the dream would be more glamorous, <laughs> but I'm not too, uh, I'm not too sad that this is the dream. We come here, we get together, like-minded individuals and friends. You know, I have a lot of acquaintances, but when I think of my friends, it's actually the people who are coming to draw here and, and two people from art school. <laughs> So still art related friends. But other than that, lots of acquaintances or business related things. But my friends are the people who have the same interest as me. So I wanna see my friends succeed. I wanna see my friends keep making art with me is the best. Fuck, I miss it when people are here. I mean, I don't, I don't feel lonely. I, I'm a Virgo, I like spending my time alone. Especially like drawing can be alone, but I sure miss having everybody around and seeing the smiling faces, the achievement. Sometimes like, you know, you got the, the underdog makes the best drawing and even the really good drawers are like, what the hell? Like, what am I missing? It's not a competition, but good things come of it. And I think if you're willing to show your art, you know, publicly, uh, there must be a reason that you want to share with humanity, you know? There's that whole idea of like the genius in the basement. Keith, is that you? Um, I think it's silly because nothing is made in a vacuum. But art history and a lot of the books make it seem like these people are more special. and they're, the only thing more special about them is they did the work. You know, they showed up. We can all achieve these things. There hasn't been a time when I couldn't teach someone to draw. I still have that challenge of uh, having someone with no hands. But this is a skill. 
And those of us who put our time in, we're going to get the benefits of that skill. Just like any skill. You got to put your time in and, and we all think this is worth it. Hey, I said I was going to go on a rant. Here we go. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, you can hear the pencil scratching. Thanks for writing in the comments, guys. I, I am able to see them and react to them now that I'm not such a uh, Luddite. Uh, before I had it set up that the I could barely see the writing on the screen. It's so small because when I plug into the HDMI, the screen ratio changes and I'm in my 40s and I probably need uh, bifocals, but I can't read it. So now I blow it up onto the TV screen so I can look up there periodically and see what you guys are writing. I like the comments. I don't know how else to get more. How do you get more comments? Say something really bad. That's kind of the way I did it in my art school years. <laughs> Go for the reaction. Okay. Hey, you know what? We got further than anticipated. So that's a, a good development. So I'm using the, the length of my pencil now. It's starting to get dull, so I'm trying to use my drawing to sharpen it. It's kind of like an economy of motion. I want to get to the point to be like an artist like King Jungness. He doesn't have to even like plan out his stuff. He just, he's an ink, like straight in there. No fear. I want to know exactly where to put the line, the right size, the right place, you know, instead of just scratching around. Now the relationships uh, over the years have gotten better between things, you know, that's proportion and practice. But I'd love to just be able to get this in like, uh, you know, a minute and just be like, bam, that's right, artist. That's for me, oh, one of the signs of mastery. Might not be the same for you. The other day, Keith asked a hard question on his Instagram. What makes a good drawing? Oh my God. This is what made me think of having a book club. Um, because I had my teacher answers right? I guess when you're also an instructor, you got to put on different hats because you can't let it all go or the students will miss what you're talking about because they can't see what you see when they're learning. Like they got a long way to go to understand that. I think I said something in the end to like balance, harmony, contrast, something to that degree. Um, I don't think uh, good drawings have to be necessarily representative of anything. When I went to art school, I had this teacher, Richard Halliday, and he was a formalist, and he really changed my life and my vision of what good drawing was because he was all about just making a mark. That's what drawing is, making a mark. But what makes it good, right? Because anyone can just put a mark down. But I feel like there's some sort of balance, some sort of harmony. You know, we as humans have a relationship to uh, vertical and horizontal alignments right we see we and when you're looking at drawing you're seeing so you have to relate to these languages but he would come in the class and like rip my art up and tell me i was a piece of shit <laughs> oh if only we could teach like that today instead of with these velvet gloves we have to wear but that was kind of like how those guys were taught in the day Luke is always telling me stories about how hardcore these guys in his field are. Whew. That's how I know that uh, the regular art, art world can't hold up to it because the commercial art world guys will just annihilate you. Designers are the same way. Designers are taught to like hate something first and rip it apart and then figure out how to make it something they like, you know? Correct me if I'm wrong, designers, but I, I did teach in the design faculty at ACAD, and it, like those poor kids, it's a tough life. But they chose it. They chose it. Uh, refinding my darks. I'm going down further. I've got two minutes uh, remaining on time here because 
forgot to set the timer again. I, I mean, I even do that in the figure drawing nights. What are we supposed to focus on here? Okay. The knee. Always a challenging. I think it looks like a often, look at it abstractly like a lumpy face old man. Put a little tone on this leg so that we can separate the light and dark here. This leg is further back too, so maybe I'll make it a little darker and blur it a little bit more. I did say I was going to do this a little bit more illustrative, and that's a time thing. Because it's going away fast. If I didn't have so much to work to do tonight, I would stay and draw probably for an extra hour. But I tend to, these drawings, I tend to just be like, well, that's done. <laughs> and that's it. I don't try to um, finish them or sell them. Although sometimes these get bought. It's not really my motivation for these. I'm just stacking them up. One day I'll have to move and I won't know where to put all this stuff. My plan is to burn it. Have a big art burn. We're actually going to schedule one this year so that people could get rid of all their old drawings. At uh, One of my students, Nancy, has a big acreage. And uh, my plan was to have it so that the, uh, we would, if someone wanted to save it, we would post them all on the internet. What, um, where else do you post? Of course the internet. What drawings you want to get rid of. And then if someone wanted to save it from the fire, uh, they could buy it so it would also enhance some sales for you potentially but you'd have to give a portion of it to charity so because you know the art's sitting there dying anyways dying in your house no one seeing it which is its intended purpose but to me these ones don't really need to be seen they are practice 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 sorry if that beeping so loud we are going to take Five. Oh my god, everything's going off now. Oh, it's Max. All right, guys, take five. Hello? Well, I'm working tonight. So I'm, I'm here until Ali off sleep, and I'm going to do some fogging after this. So thanks for reminding me. They will get closed tonight. All right, see you tomorrow. For Instagram. Oh, come on, Bunny. All right, three minutes now. I'm cutting time out. I don't know where my head's at. I'm going to blame it on my horoscope. <laughs> you know, real science-like. I wish I could take a class with Keith about these pan pastels. Wouldn't that be great if he wanted to teach a class this fall and I could take it? Like Thursday nights, I have free, except for some board meetings. Damn it, I just have no time, man. That's why these practice days are so important. Life is just erasing away like this eraser does. Just take the darkness away. Leave me the light. What's cool about having the forced small class sizes with social distancing is that we're all going to be able to have like a command center like I have here. Because you've got six feet all the way around you. You can have a bunch of tables and chairs. Not just one tab array. There'll be lots more furniture in here and lots more space. Hence, 
a good idea to start painting. I always feel like when it's crammed and there's like 15 people or more for a drawing session, it's just too tight to paint. I feel like I need room to paint and I need room to back up off a of painting. Although I haven't really painted while on a drawing horse, so that should be interesting. Maestro Keith does it all the time. But I think if I'm painting, I will have to be at an easel. To me, drawing is done on the drawing board, especially because you can like look straight over it. And painting is done when you've advanced more at an easel, so you have learned how to back up, how to stand, how to see your work in a different way. And also, you gotta build up those muscles. That's how I designed the school, at least to incorporate both modalities. That's not how I've seen it at other places though. And when I went to art school, we didn't, I mean, they had the horses. I don't think anyone ever used them. Before I opened the art school, ACAT offered them to me. I think they just wanted them out of their way. Although I didn't take them because they were big and bulky and ugly. And instead, I spent all the money I had saved building these ones out of solid oak. They almost cost $500 each by the end of the day. It's crazy. But they're so nice and they should outlive me. And uh, if I ever die, they'll be left behind and artists can have them. I had designed them to fold because I thought we would fold them up at the end of the day. But the more you fold, the more they would break. So I've folded one or two once or twice. They just stay unfolded and I drive a CRV. I can fit a lot of these in my car. So we are back to 25 minutes, bringing us to just after 8.30. My goal is to now get this done. Although I'm gonna leave some of it scratchy uh, just for the economy of it. darken this a little bit here too. I'm glad you guys can hear the scratching. control man all right clean up that leg drink a little bit of the cleanse juice seriously 10 days not another flavor in my mouth and I still like it like I could go for 40 for sure I don't need to, fortunately. I'm feeling pretty good after day 10 already, and they say that that's kind of the minimum for this cleanse to work. And I do it three to four times a year. Uh, really, really good maintenance, I think, on my health. It clears up the old psoriasis. Gives me a lot of hours of the day, like I'm, I'm sleeping way less. I don't feel like I need more sleep. I also think, I have no proof, but like intermittent fasting, um, I notice more rapid muscle growth. I'm still doing my workouts, so it's not stopping me from that. Mo okay, there's the little nubbit. That's the epicondyle of the uh, tibia and fibula. So there's a little shadow there and then it kind of bounces back out here. So I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for my core again. And I'm kind of, rather than drawing the direction of the form, I'm actually just making uh, marks that follow the cross contour in this case. When I first drew, I already, I went the direction of the form, but now I'm using it more illustrative at least that's what I'm telling myself. 
That's the ankle. The lateral medialis. The olecranon. The heel, basically. There's a little bit of a lost edge here too, so I kind of make it uh, a little short. So that's actually uh, where the shadow's going. So I need to give a little bit more mass to the top of the foot here before it goes up to the leg. Fortunately, all of this is in the dark. There is reflected light in here, but I first need to get uh, the dark on there. Reflected light along here. So just soften it out. Soften it up. And then put more material on top to get the darker. This might be a job for a chamois. There we go. Sure does a nice job on the real dark, so. Oh, it's lots of tooth to this paper. So if we're gonna do painting on the drawing nights, I guess I'm gonna have to figure out what my materials are gonna be. Keith makes these beautiful panels, hint, hint. Um, so I might have to buy a bunch of surfaces beforehand to be ready. Oh, uh, you know what? I might actually work on that painting paper. That arches paper. Just buy a couple pads of that. Then it's not heartbreaking if I don't like anything. Just toss it. It also stores really well. Gotta think about storage all the time. I don't own a house. Yet. Yet. You know what? I'm just waiting for the economy to get right for me to own a house. Single guy? It can happen. Especially if it turns to Detroit here. I walked in on a conversation today. This conversation was quite far away from me. But they were talking about how Calgary's, uh, the river might dry up. There's science to that. And so not only because we don't have the oil industry, um, we might wind up like Detroit. <laughs> and I said, you know what, guys? I walked in here super positive. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't want to hear that stuff. I think there's enough outdoor activities and this city's big enough to support itself. But if people want to go because of that, then the real estate's going to get cheap enough for Bunny. I guess people are buying houses like crazy right now because the uh, mortgage rates are so low. But I wouldn't buy a house in the summer because they're more expensive. Wait till it sucks and you would hate to move and people have been holding on to the house that didn't sell in the summer. By the way, I'm not uh, legally able to give any financial advice. I am not a lawyer. I am not uh, an investor or anything like that in that respect. So this is just ramblings. Please don't sue me because you took some advice off a guy who's just drawing some legs right now. Just drawing some legs. Just gonna do some long strokes. I love the fall of light and there's a painter, if you haven't checked him out, named Bo Bartlett. Bo Bartlett, an American painter. It's kind of Americana. He always has the most beautiful fall of light. Like the legs and feet are always the same brown as like the beach that a character stands on. It's a really, really beautiful effect. It's almost as if instead of the people are lit by the sun, they're lit by a cone of light. Um, so check that out. I, I really like his paintings. They are, uh, the characters in them are just mundane. You know, it's like Norman Rockwell, but everyone's really angsty and bored. 
<laughs> but he's got such a beautiful control of his paint. They, yeah, they're they're also boring. You know, like the people that are just standing, kind of uh, addressing the viewer with their gaze. Oh, fucking art speak. Try not to do that. Try not to do that. That's what the book club would be for. Art speak. And although I watch a lot of YouTube, none of it is art stuff. I've been really into uh, bartending stuff. I'm thinking about when I'm off. And also, when on a cleanse, I watch so much cooking shows. Like, I've watched every Maddie Matheson. By watching the cooking shows, other than completely torturing myself, uh, I think it just helps me remember that how much I love cooking. And fortunately, my uh, roommate's girlfriend has come to town and she's cleaned the kitchen finally because it was a disaster to work in. My roommate is a little bit of a hoarder. And by a little bit, I mean like insane amounts. Uh, but now the space is so nice and I feel like I can go in there and create again because it's not, you can't cook in an unclean kitchen. It's just like, I can't work in a messy studio. You guys who've been to my studio, like there's a lot of stuff in here for sure, but I keep it very clean. When I was open, it was me who was doing all the mopping every week. Uh, it's a little bit of joy comes out of the loving your space, I think. Let's go here. I, a little bit of white would be nice on this apple or pomegranate or peach, whatever it happens to be in your drawing. It looks like to me a peach. I'd have to look at the leaves because this also looks like apple leaves. Maybe it's a hybrid. Some argue that the fruit of knowledge is a pomegranate. Uh, I read Food of the Gods and some argue and the Gnostics would also argue that uh, it's actually a psilocybin mushroom that Soma is actually these monks getting high and I actually really wouldn't doubt that you know it seems very reasonable to me and why do we not have a fossil record of these things well mushrooms are organic and they wouldn't survive makes sense that was from Terence McKenna's book I think uh, Paul Stamets also talked a lot about that in his work Good old Washington boy. Okay. Gonna enhance this stock a little bit. There we go. I'm just gonna use some cross hatchies here. Make it look like a drawing. Then you won't fool the bot. Anchor bot. I make myself laugh. I'm gonna make the snake head even bigger than original. Just like the fruit. They are, in terms of the storytelling, and more important uh, to convey. Not that, I don't know who's gonna look at this. I will put it on Instagram probably right away. Oh my God. I think I need to practice drawing snakes. I've always wanted to do a master copy of the, uh, what is it? The Fall of Eden. It was a painting. I think it might've been Cabin now. Um, at the Musée d'Orsay, it was in the same room as the Bouguereau, but it was like tiny. And maybe it was a study for something bigger, but it was so good. It was my favorite painting in there, and I can't even remember the name. Anyways, I've got photos of it, and I think I might uh, do a copy of it this year. Then that would give me a chance to work on my snakes, because that is nowhere near a snake right now. Why do I suck at snakes right now? 
I do snakes ever since I was like a little kid. I told the story last week about all the headbanger cousins teaching me to draw. I was really good at skulls in my youth. I don't do them so much anymore as just skulls. Kind of got over my punk and metal phase, I guess. But um, they're still very popular and they look cool in your house. And at uh, Kedal Hoyuk, which is uh, in Turkey, I believe, uh, there are temples, very old temples, that they would take their ancestors' skulls. Actually, kind of like I think in the Philippines and stuff, they keep the dead around. So skulls would have been the first like art and decoration of that type back then. You know, Memento Mori, that's my favorite kind of still life. Reminding you that you're going to die. I have this ring that I always wear. I don't know if you can focus on that. It's got the Reaper and the reminder of time to remind me always that life is very short. And so you got to make the most of every moment and every relationship and every chance you get. It might sound really emo, but it's not in a dark way for me. Like I, here, here's the thing, you know, we, uh, we get up every morning and some of us sleep until noon. I like to wake up before the sun. And for a while there, I was going out every day and photographing the sunrise. How come in our society, we don't pay homage to the sun like past cultures you know we pay more homage to our computer screens and yet the power of plants growing of water flowing of things living the things that that give us energy it all stems from the sun in tony robbins book he says how come um oh wait i got a i got a quote tony robbins book quote Oh man, how come the news doesn't wake up every morning and say, good morning, once and again, there's a miracle that's happened. The sun has risen, you know, to remind us like this beauty, the things that we're so interested in come from that, you know, like we, we get our brain like deletes so much stuff out and it, artists, our job is to re-show people the miracle and wonder that is life, I think, and that, Keith, is what makes a good drawing. <laughs> oh my god. Anyhow, we kind of start to take things for granted a little too easily. People, things, our time, which is very limited. You know, what is it we're doing? What is it we're, we want to accomplish? What's the point of this drawing? I know for me what it is, but I kind of keep that a little bit on the down low because people can also judge and just wreck your flow. So you also got to be careful about sharing too much in that respect uh, while you're still like a, you know, creative little child in a way. We have sensitivities that we must be aware of and we must be gentle with ourselves. Oh, I got a book for the book club. The War of Art. And then this guy also wrote uh, how to be a professional artist, how to do the work. Maybe we need to like get together and do like art self-help, kind of like the artist way. And man, I mean, honestly, the artist way changed my life. For sure. It made me, I'm already driven to do this, but it made it possible. You know, I'd go on these little art dates to Stride Gallery. I did do a lot of things on my own. And uh, the artist way kind of made it okay to, you know, maybe not have a whole bunch of friends who are into the same thing. And, but just to go out and do them. Cause I, I mean, I'm introverted. People wouldn't think that, but I would say that I'm introverted. I would way, way rather even be home and like read a book or listen to some music than to go to an art opening without a doubt and yet this is the field and you have to do it 
Um, but I'm not so comfortable in those settings around all those people who I just find that they're not really talking about anything and I, I'm not a big fan of small talk you know hey how are you I know how to do it it's just like you don't get any value out of it really it, some people are just really good at that and like connecting with people on that level that's not my forte I would definitely rather spend it in the studio I often go to uh, the artist talk though or I'll go to the opening or sorry not the opening the next day after the opening because then also there's not people around so you can actually see and enjoy the work I feel like um, being who I am and in, in this position in the city that people expect things of me and you know like I don't know remembering names or being able to talk at an opening not my strong point when I was a student it was all about getting the food <laughs> at the opening Okay, I didn't put the toe far enough back. Man, okay. Look at what you're drawing before you commit. There we go. Or you'll make the same mistake I just did. A small mistake. No big deal. Cultivate your bo inner Bob Ross. Let's take a little bit more out of the side. All right. We've got five minutes here. Five minutes. There's a shadow, uh, which helps, ex and then curves to help explain the toe, and then a line and then some more. We'll just combine those together. I always love too in these sculptures that they do the Greek toe where the second toe is longer uh, than the first. Genetically I don't have that toe but it was kind of standard back in the day. Who knows if the artist even had that I think it looks pretty good. Put the shadow under the toes and the shadow from the nail. Just drawing these feet a little bit more abstract. Simplified. It's a time thing. And in fact, we're not doing so bad on time. Uh, I was getting pretty worried there. I'm going to leave the nails light. The toenails light. Actually, I made that mistake last week of making... You know, these things stick like I'm still bothered about what I did last week. Um, oh well. It's all practice. but I lightened the knuckle on the top of the foot last week a little too bright uh, and didn't go over it. Ran, you know, I called it the end of time. When I'm done, I'm done, the time. But uh, I don't wanna make that mistake again. So they, these have to have tone on them because they're not actually in the light. They're catching some light, it's soft light. so. We'll leave the nails a little bit light. That gives for an interesting effect as well. And then there's a core shadow, so back to that little line cross hatchy stuff. Oh, thanks for checking in, Greg. That's always nice.
some little cross hatchy stuff for the rocks. It might be nice to leave it kind of rough, right? So I don't smudge it. Darken that up. It's like there's a ledge here for her foot. Gonna have to think up some uh, much more uh, dynamic poses this year. Kind of have a plan. Because I'm really enjoying these classical ones. These classical poses. These models will have to bring their A game this time. Although most of them do. Except for that one which never made it to this channel. Had to ban a few experiences from this place. All right. Do a little drop shadow here. I'm talking like design. It's a cast shadow. Very, very dark. 25 seconds here. And then it fades out. So I'll do that with crosshatch. What is going on here? Okay. You know, I might actually have to lighten some of this up so we can see the folds of the toes. Some toe folds. There we go. Maybe some nail as well. Oh, God! Forgot that was gonna happen. Shocked me. All right, we are getting close to time. Uh, it's 8:30. Uh, we're gonna take five-minute break. I'm gonna go for the full 25. That will bring us to nine, and then uh, I'm gonna go over time with I don't know, maybe a little talk critique. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that one. Um, Maybe I won't do it this week. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So indecisive right now. But enjoying this process a lot. In fact, I need to stop. So, break. 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 Take a break. Take a break. I if I can straighten that out a little bit. Wow, the view in YouTube is different than my camera view. Noted. There's a lot going on. So we'll take five. Take five, guys and girls. Four, I mean. Drink some water. Or cleanse juice. Oh, yeah. Put the mask on. All these stacks. Her face is not wide enough on mine. Should draw her hairline.
Head a little wider. I know it's not time yet, but things just need to be done when you see them. Five more minutes, boys and girls, and days and frogs. Let's hit it. Okay. Mm. At the bottom, it's all cayenne pepper, and you get this like warm finish. Okay, her uh, upper back here is a little too large and rounded. I need to make it a little more slender. So we'll drop down to the scapula like that, and then like that. Look, it's, it's minutia here. All these shapes are a little too aggressive and large. Went on, they should be more subtle. So I'm gonna, I'll darken kind of the lower side of the line. Just to give some rhythm too, to what we're looking at here. Okay, for as I, I'm gonna leave the tail like that. Looks fine. The snake sucks. Why does this suck so bad? His eye might be a little bit big and needs some shading. Now that I'm drawing the snake, I wish I was listening to Tool. Oh, Tool. You would get me for copyright or Sony Music or whoever owns your ass. Your assets, assets, I said. Come on, YouTube, don't. Don't be a dick. It's kind of my sink, sure. When the ground comes out, this is where I'll sign it. I'm already thinking about that. We still got time here. Jeez, Louise. Oh. All right, all right, all right. What can we do to enhance now? That's nice. I feel like, you know, I felt a little rushed, like I wasn't getting things done. Now, I feel like I got all the time in the world to pick apart little areas. When I first started doing this, there was never enough time. But as you get to focus better and you're able to see more things and pick out what's important to you, of course, you know, having preferences helps. Uh, but now it's almost like, ah, it's too much time. I need, I need a break. <laughs> I do kind of miss doing those 20 hour drawings because to me that really shows professionalism. You can't 
you got to be work lighter at the start too because you can't afford to make the mistakes although tend to, to use arches paper uh, or BFK Reeves which are all cotton papers and you could rub this dark in and you could still get it out worst case scenario you use sandpaper oh sorry guys my bad wasn't looking up at the screen I guess I am getting some skills here uh, in terms of broadcast I don't know how many of these I've done now it's been a fairly good experience to be honest being able to share with you guys chat with you guys I use these photos I've, I mean I took them because I wanted to look at them and draw right so sometimes things just sit though you never get to it I still haven't started my tarot card project we moved a giant wall into the studio uh, a job I got painting a mural uh, so I can't do the lead I can't finish the lead coating here because of the health issues of the people I'm working with me I'll talk to them and maybe get a chance I need about six days uh, in order to get it done it needs one more coat too it's just one of those things I think my roommates leaving this weekend for camping so I could potentially bring my work home with me we got a nice big basement So I'm picking out uh, areas I can make a little bit darker because I got the dark tool in my hand. And then I'm going to move over to uh, making things a little bit lighter. Up next, the miracle of the sun. Here. <laughs> Young men in acid. Release, really believe that all energy, all matter is merely energy condensed through a slow vibration. Here's Tom with the weather. That's on a Tool album, and it's the comedian Bill Hicks. Funny as hell when you see it as stand-up. You know what? 18 minutes, man. I can get at this hair. I could do it, boys. Oh my god. I'm not sure my eraser will do it, though. I think it likes a smaller sharpen. This is a Japanese sketch eraser pen by Noni. Because. My favorite eraser is currently in my plein air kit and I left that in my car. Oops. There's so much stuff in my car, it might as well be my second home. It needs a clean. I have so much stuff in the car that I have intended to recycle. Uh, old clothes, some Halloween costumes, sheets, shoes to give away for donation. Just haven't done it. Yet. Maybe we'll cheat this a little bit more. Just 
lighten the reflect the light slightly more. Right there. Okay, I need a sharp one. Oh wait, we have the general's layout pencil. All my pencils were sharp from last week. So I didn't have to do any preliminary prep today, which was great. I like when it's everything's just ready for me. One day I'll be able to have an assistant. I'll be like, mix a goddamn paint assistant. I think being my assistant would be actually a fun job because I I'm empathetic. I I would be kind to them. I might even take them out to lunch all the time. Wouldn't be a nasty boss. Or so I say right now. Who knows? The power could get to me. But I doubt it. People in general don't really change. <laughs> Small things. be worth it. Just tell myself that. It'll be worth it. If you just do the hair properly. Get lots of mileage out of it. Looks like you do more work than you do did, you know, if you can get something that looks detailed. Of course, those of you who are watching right now, you all know this. I appreciate you guys coming and listening or just having it on because I know you don't need to and I haven't gone full madman rant status yet thankfully because I know I would regret it my opinions don't really matter anyhow they're mine and mine alone get into that discussion another day perhaps I kind of just try to talk about what I'm doing. Stuff is being recorded. I hate stuff being recorded. I also don't like about Zoom that it can be recorded. And like, I feel like we should be used to a surveillance society by now. But it's just that I like my freedom and the losing that autonomy that yeah I did say something stupid in the moment and that's how I felt but instead it becomes a fact it comes back to haunt you that's why I'm not in politics also who the hell would want to do that job I would be the mayor of like a small town, like uh, Cranbrook. <laughs> I would love that. You know, everyone in town knows you. You're the guy. Like who is the mayor of Ladysmith kind of thing? The small town that I grew up in. What? Somebody outside. Okay, that's okay, that's all right. 12 minutes, look, I gotta stop for a minute and get some white in here. Let's see what we got for white. Let's see what we've got for white. Here we go. Now, that's not pure white, this is pure white. This is pure white. Generals, white, 4414. Gonna hit the highlights, some pure white. Things closest to the light source. That helps the fingers kind of stand out a little bit, right? In fact, maybe some of the hair. 
can use a little white. This white works much better than the general's white I used last week. I don't know what the difference is. Top of the arm. This one's a little creamier than the stick. Goes on a little bit better. Like axe. We'll add white on this side. It's bounce back light a little bit. There is light on that side of the figure. This is going to need a sharpen real quick. Where's my knife? That'd be cheap. I'll just grab another one. But if you squint your eyes, it's actually following this path down the leg. It's brightest here. In between uh, where the quad muscles be. It's the largest, flattest area as well. But since we're enhancing it, let's just bring it along the whole leg. That's fun. And maybe even down the hip a little bit. kind of like a shine mark. And the back leg, oh, why not? I was gonna keep it a little darker to set it back, but let's put a little right there. A little bing, a little bing, a little bam, a little boom. Some of this hair back here. Oh, it gets gray when you touch the other stuff though. Careful. Careful, bunny. I'm also not entirely sure how well this smudges. My fingers are a little bit gray though. Just cross contour it, cross contour it a little bit. Could even sneak a little on this calf, why not? Maybe the rock has a little snake eyeball, it's shiny. The apple for sure right there. Right there. I don't know about the leaf though. Uh, does that help it? I don't know. I don't know about that. Let's do a little ground. Do the old ground and pound. Okay, we'll do some, some cheater stuff. We'll actually put a light into our reflected lights. Because why not? That's illustrative. It's not realistic. A little on the nose. A little on the head. Okay, now I'm just getting crazy here. What is going on, Bunny? Going overboard is what's going on. And that's okay. Oh yeah, let's go for this leg. To the leg here. 
You know what? I didn't really darken this foot at all. It looked a little too bright. Kind of forgot about it. darks in there so we got five minutes left in the full time I'll bring us right to nine put the white away but once again I realize I gotta sit down Monday and spend like an hour sharpening everything my tool area is a mess before school begins, I've taken a lot of time off in September. It's Virgo month. It's my birthday month. I'm going to give myself a little freedom again. I'm going to go to the field Callaway Park with my friend Cosmic. Uh, get in some gallivanting and rides. Get in some immaturity. We have a lot of fun together, laughing our asses off. So uh, being the only two grown-ups. Last time we were there, the ride operator asked us if we were on a date. I don't think I was getting fresh with him, but maybe that's what it seemed like. <laughs> I guess also we make a cute couple, obviously. Do a little clean up. I mean, should I just go for putting a dark line all the way around? I mean, we got this on video. We know what it looks like. Is that insane? <laughs> okay. We're we'll do it. We're going to do it. This was a thing that I used to do with my work all the time. Is go real dark and thick outline. I don't know if that comes from my cartooning background. Uh, often I would paint different colors, kind of like an aura. It's also like, I don't know, that's how, if I was to make a sticker, I would do a nice thick uh, die cut outline. Oh my god, was that a mistake? Possibly. But hey, it's learning. Maybe I'm like, oh my god, I gotta do that every time, that's my thing. That's how you know it's a Batista. The outline is dark and thick. Actually, I think like, I'm not 100% sure, like Stephen Bauman and those guys. Kind of got tricks like that, you know? I don't want it all the way around. So I just counteracted myself. Say Levy. Say Levy, Jeff. En français. Maybe I'll leave the rock so it kind of disappears a little bit. Okay, okay. I don't hate it. It's not exactly what I was after kind of flattens the image outlines, right? But I don't hate it. Let me make that blacker. Make this all darker here. This is a dark area. Two minutes left. Boy. 
Yes, there are things I would work on more. We're almost there, 56 seconds. If this was a figure drawing event, we'd be hearing sighs and oohs and ahs as if they didn't know time was gonna end the session eventually. It happens. Hmm, I'll just put a little, little wee Batista under the fruit. Maybe it lighten up the fruit a little bit too. Lighten up that fruit. Darken this rock. Help set the feet apart a little bit. Oh my gosh. You are correct, Jeff, that is a was. That's the time, guys. I'm gonna flip up so we can do a side-by-side -side sight comparison. So just bear with me for a wee little moment. And uh, we'll have a look. I don't think I, I'm gonna have much more to say. I just talked for three hours. And thank you for listening. All right. Ah. Hey, oh. Awesome. Okay, I just gotta make a few adjustments here. Move the camera and all. Here we go, here we go, here we go. We tilt up, oh yes, and there's our skeleton as well. There we go, hey. I can bring this back guys that might be the end let's see let's see are you still seeing stuff oh my god it's working agreed black lines do matter so ah jelly that's Fred Astaire guys my gosh I'm so grateful to spend the time with you uh, doing what I love, getting some practice in, having you there, be a witness to creation. It's archived so other people get to see it later. But let's do a side-by-side -side comparison here. Uh, I like to see it on the screen. I really do like the black outline in this case. That way I don't really have to deal with um, the background. This is the third time I've drawn her now. I would say that my, uh, my slant isn't as much uh, my head looks a little small because this is about sight size. Here, let's just, it's hard that I can't stand back. I'm a little bit bigger. My head's about the same size. This area is a little bit bigger. I wasn't doing it for, uh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit bigger. I'm like 4% larger, I think. Just, you know, a little taller, a little longer. Uh, you can see the snake. He's a little closer here. But uh, I'm really happy with that, how that turned out. I'll share it to social media. That's part of the point too, I guess, is we make a nice drawing, we clean it up, we keep it in the pad to look at in future years. You know, I want 10,000 hours. We've gotta get close to that by now. Uh, Mastery is our goal. Thank you for joining me. Do all the things you gotta do. Share your work, hashtag it, like this, subscribe, put comments below, uh, visit atelierartista.com if you want to download all the pictures. What else? I think that's about it. I don't, you know, I can't remember all the things I'm supposed to say to do at the end. Just really glad you're here and hope you join me again next week for another exciting time drawing at the studio with Bunny. Ciao for now. This is a slow-mo version.